Hey, what's up fellow adventurers? Welcome to this new Wayfinder video. My name is Aviero. And today we will discuss all the information regarding the six characters we currently know about. And we'll also be taking a look at their four individual abilities, passives, and signature weapons. And also talk about which character will perhaps suit you the best. As always, leave a like, that really helps out the channel. And if you're new around here and want to stay up to date with the latest info regarding Wayfinder and more, then be sure to subscribe and don't forget to leave in the comments which character you will play at early access. But for now, let's get started. First up, we have Wingrave, also known as the Seeker. Wingrave is a Templar clad in spell-forged armor and sustained by his faith in the Architects. He's a natural leader and true champion, always ready to defend the innocent and to smite the forces of evil. Wingrave excels at close combat. He specializes in supporting allies, summoning shields of light, and healing his allies, even as he calls down divine judgment on his enemies. So he's basically your paladin, you could say. His first ability is called Righteous Strike. Hitting an enemy causes an explosion of healing energy to shoot out and healing Wingrave and nearby ally. His second ability is called Radiant Pulse. It forms a divine shield that blocks incoming projectiles and boosts defense of allies standing behind it. He's also able to move around with the shield. His third ability is called Judgment. It marks enemies for judgment by adding a halo above them. Anyone hitting a judged enemy will restore their own health in the process. And his last ability is called Divine Edges. It's a powerful barrier that makes anyone standing inside of it immune to damage and heals them over time. Now let's talk about his passive called Healing Pulse. It makes it so that melee finishers will heal both Wingrave and one nearby ally. And his signature weapon is called Bastion. And Bastion's ability is called Power Bash. It's a shield bash that does massive impact and guard break damage. Keep in mind, in this game, signature weapons have their own ability. So as you can see, his kit is really based around the idea of tanking incoming damage and healing himself and allies. So if you're usually the type to play tank support, he's probably the character for you. But don't forget, even the Bastion is Wingrave's signature weapon and undoubtedly pairs well with his kit. Signature weapons are not locked to a character, so if you want to use this with another character, then that is of course an option too. Next up is Silo, also known as the Tactician. Swift and precise, Silo makes every shot count. Born into a family of smugglers, he spent his life running under the radar and challenging tyrants. Now he's using those same skills to fight the gloom. Silo loves long odds. The greater the challenge, the greater the thrill. Silo switches easily between melee and range combat and is at his best when he embraces this versatility. He has a host of tactical tools. He can distract his foes with illusions, slow them with oil, or burn them with fire, potentially setting off deadly chain reactions. So he's a DPS that does great in range damage, but also melee. His first ability is called Firebomb. He tosses a firebomb that ignites enemies, dealing damage to them over time, causing a chain reaction with Oil Bomb. His second ability is called Oil Bomb. It leaves a pool of oil in front of Silo, slowing enemies and causing them to take additional damage. So after throwing your Oil Bomb, you can ignite the oil with your first ability Firebomb to start the chain reaction. His third ability is called Protoclone. Silo dashes backwards, leaving behind a clone that pulls nearby enemies in. The clone will taunt nearby enemies into attacking it until it expires. And his last ability is called Arc Nemesis. Silo sends out Egg to shock all enemies in the area dealing a burst damage. Egg remains in the area for a short time period, slowing and damaging nearby enemies. Now his passive ability. His passive ability is called Strategic Advantage. Silo deals bonus melee and range damage to enemies that are debuffed, and his signature weapon is called Longshot. Longshot's ability is called Dead Eye. It causes three D-Die weak spots to appear on every enemy in range. Hitting these weak spots will result in high damage and guaranteed crits. So as you can see, he's a DPS 
that doesn't just rely on single target damage, but also has AoE in his kit and a bit of melee. He's a good pick for you if you enjoy to do high amounts of damage and usually play range base characters. Next up is Nis, also known as the Shadow Dancer. Nis is kind to the shadows, and darkness serves as her weapon and her cloak. She is one of the Deep Eldren, an ancient people who now serve the malevolent Precursors. When Nis and her clan challenged the Precursors, her family was wiped out and Nis escaped into exile. Deadly and swift, Nis cares little for humanity. But she is sworn to destroy the Precursors, and the Seekers can help her take her revenge. Nis is an Eldrin Shadow Dancer and is at her best when she's in motion. She dances around her enemies, defending herself with a cloak of shadows and striking them down with spectral blades. So she's basically the assassin-type character. Her first ability is called Shadow Step. She dashes in a line, dealing damage. After a short delay, a Gloom clone will dash from her initial position to her, dealing damage to enemies along the path. Her second ability is called Umbral Aura. Nis is empowered by Umbral Magic, causing her next three dodges to pierce a nearby enemy with shadow. Her third ability is called Vengeful Shade. Nis briefly becomes immune to attacks and damage enemies in front of her. And her last ability is called Gloom Shroud. For the next few seconds, Nis' shadow steps can be used at zero cost. Her passive ability is called Lingering Shadow. After dodging, she gains attack power for a short duration and her signature weapon is called Knight's Edge. And the weapon ability is called Daggerfall. It forms multiple magical daggers that float around the character and they fire towards enemies as attacks when enemies come within range. So as you can see, she's really an assassin type of character. She has a very quick play style of dodging in and out of battle. She also seems to be the most complex character to master in this game as of now. So if you're a fan of assassin roguelike characters, she's most likely the right pick for you. At the start, you'll only be able to pick from the initial three characters that we just covered. Let's now talk about the other characters you'll be able to unlock as well at early access. Next up, we got Senja, also known as the Champion. Before the gloom swallowed the warrior, Senja was the greatest gladiator in the history of the Imperial Arena. She is the last of the Iron Sisters, a league of warriors from the distant dominion of the Seven Winds, and she smites her enemies with both storm and steel. Senja loves to put on a show. She delights in close combat and can use her affinity for the storm to drag her enemies close or blast them across the battlefield in a burst of lightning. She's your tanky bruiser type of character. Let's talk about her abilities. Her first ability is called Gladiator Pummel. Senja punches forwards, then holds a showboat. On release, Senja punches again and buffs her next weapon attack. Fully showboating increases the damage of the follow-up punch. Her second ability is called Gain Favor. Senja holds to showboat for the roaring crowd, filling her favor. On release, taunts nearby enemies while buffing Senja and her allies. Her third ability is called Lightning Grasp. Senja uses lightning to pull all displaceable enemies towards her in a large cone in front of her. And her last ability is called Grand Finale. In the form of a lightning spear, Senja charges to smash an enemy, dealing massive damage to them and fully filling the crowd's favor. Now onto her passive ability called Crowd Favorite. Holding Gladiator Pummel and gain favor abilities will cause Senja to showboat. While showboating, she cannot be staggered takes reduced damage, and increases the crowd's favor. As the crowd's favor increases, Senja gains attack damage and ability power. Her signature weapon is called Colossus, and the weapon ability is called Gladiator Slice. Performs a quick melee attack that buffs the next ability. Using Gladiator Slice again, will perform an empowered Gladiator Slice, dealing additional damage up to two times. So as you can see, is Senja really in tanky bruiser that is able to dish out massive melee damage while also taking punches herself and providing buffs while doing so. If you love bruiser type of characters, she's probably the right pick for you. Next up, we have Kairos, also known as the War Mage. Arcane power flows through Kairos, and he can unleash this force to devastate his enemies. 
He's the last survivor of a forgotten civilization, a wizard who transformed his flesh into pure mystical energy. Though his people are long lost, he's sworn to keep the gloom from destroying the world that remains. While he prefers to avoid close combat, Kiros wields tremendous mystical power. He can scatter foes with blasts of raw energy and crush enemies with a massive shockwave. So Kiros is the magical type of character. His first ability is called Savage Rake. Kairos rakes the ground with violent energy, dealing damage to all enemies in front of him. Arcane fragments can be consumed to cast Savage Rake at no cost. His second ability is called Siphon Radiant. Kiros releases a wave of energy around himself that damages enemies and absorbs arcane power, reducing his cooldowns and granting him with arcane fragments. His third ability is called Arcane Focus. Kairos marks enemies in an area. As enemies are hit, the mark builds up in power and detonates at max, or when it expires. And his last ability is called Hand of Reckoning. Kairos deals massive damage to enemies in a large radius around him. His passive is called Arcane Fragments. It generates arcane fragments by using Siphon Radiant on enemies and landing combo finishers. Arcane Fragments are also automatically consumed to grant extra charges of Savage Rake. His signature weapon is called Epitaph, and the ability of Epitaph is called Arcane Harvest. It's a spinning slash that deals damage in a 360 degree arc and steals ability power from enemies, increases the character's ability power per enemy hit. So as you can see, he's not your typical mage character. Cairo still has to be semi-close to his enemies for his abilities to land. So he's a semi-range character. But still, if you're usually into magical type of DPS characters and you don't mind the range, he's probably a great pick for you. And now last but not least, Venomous, the season one character also known as the Alchemist. The Venomous is a deadly spy from the maze, and her poisons have changed the course of history. But the gloom has swallowed both the maze and the empire, and her secret war is over. Ven's a survivor, and for now the Seekers are the only game in town. Venomous loves to play with her prey, and she can switch between ranged and melee combat with ease. Her chemicals can poison her enemies and strengthen her allies, and her thrusters give her tremendous mobility. So she's like Silo, great at range and melee, but she focuses around poison abilities and buffing her teammates. Her first ability is called Transfusion. Venomous shoots a volley of poison needles that lock onto nearby enemies dealing damage. Hitting an enemy with a needle causes a healing projectile to seek a nearby ally or herself. These projectiles heal over time based on the number of stacks of venom there are on the source enemy. Her second ability is called Vampiric Blast. Venomous launches a bomb that absorbs up to five nearby poison clouds. After a brief delay, the bomb explodes, dealing damage to enemies and healing allies based on the number of poison clouds absorbed. Her third ability is called Venom Thruster. Venomous dashes in a direction, leaving a trail of poison clouds behind her. Poison clouds damage and apply stacks of venom to enemies hit by it. And her last ability is called Deep Breath. Venomous fires a massive explosion that damages and applies five stacks of empowered venom to enemies. Empowered venom deals damage over time and counts as additional stacks of venom for the Master of Venoms. Her passive and transfusion her first ability, her passive Master of Venoms, makes it so that weapon hits apply venom, dealing damage over time and stacking up to five times. Weapon hits against enemies with five stacks of venom create a poison cloud that deals damage and applies stacks of venom. A poison cloud can only be created by this effect once every five seconds. And her signature weapon is called Nightshade. And the weapon's ability is called Wyvern's Fury. Reloads the rifle with an empowered clip. During this clip, the weapon is fully automatic and every bullet is infused to apply a stack of poison on hit. Poison deals a small amount of damage, over six seconds, stacking up to 20 times. So as you can see, Venomous is really your ranged DPS support since she wants to keep doing damage to the enemy. That way she can provide healing 
to herself and the team. So she's probably a great character for anyone that wants to support their team, but still being able to dish out damage over time. Other than that, she's also the season one character like mentioned before. And we will have a new character and signature weapon every season in Wayfinder, and seasons will last three months each. So there we have it, all the six characters that will be out during early access. There will also be a heroic Kairos version. He basically has slightly more base stats than the regular Kairos, other than that there isn't much info about him yet. You will be able to get him in the Exalted Founders pack. But other than that, I think they all sound like a lot of fun, each in their own way. I myself, however, am probably going to start with Wingrave since I usually play tank characters. But I'm curious about what you'll pick, so be sure to leave down in the comments which character you will pick and why. I'll be uploading more Wayfinder videos these coming days before Wayfinder officially comes out on the 15th. That's only three more days from today. It might already be out at the time you're watching this video. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next Wayfinder video. Till the next one, bye.